DJI just released a massive firmware update for the Mavic 3 and in today's video we'll talk everything you need to know about it. Hey everyone, this is Mike, welcome back to another video, I hope you guys are doing great today and I was lucky enough to be able to test this new firmware update before the official announcement so now I can give you all of my impressions, I can give you all the info you need to know because it's a pretty massive one, so let's check it out. So first off, the name of the firmware is 01000700. This one requires a DJI Fly application 1.6.4, both for iOS and Android, so make sure you update your DJI Fly application to that specific version before you can actually update to the latest firmware. This firmware update brings a whole bunch of improvements to the Mavic 3 and makes it almost perfect in my opinion and many of these improvements have something to do with the telephoto camera. Something which I'm really happy about because previously the telephoto camera has been some, somewhat of a gimmick, it wasn't really useful to be honest, but now after all of these new additions to the Mavic 3 firmware, it's finally something that I plan to be using a lot from now on. So talking about the telephoto camera, let's start with the first change. When you enter photo mode, the telephoto camera now supports single shooting, AB, burst shooting, time shot and any other sub modes. Meaning that you can do so much more with this camera and it opens up many many possibilities for the telephoto camera. And that's very very true also for another reason, you can finally use manual camera settings. Previously we were not able to shoot with manual camera settings, now you can select your own values that you want to use for your photos and start shooting not only in JPEG but also in RAW. Yes, RAW is also supported for the telephoto camera. Finally, we have a little bit more usability from this camera. I'm really happy to see that. And each of the photos will be around 25 megabytes and it will retain a whole lot more data and information to work with later in post. Next, we have more improvements from the telephoto camera, but this time in video mode. So previously we had this explore mode on the Mavic 3, which was allowing us to zoom in up to 28 times uh, and it was always visible on the screen. We were always able to enter that uh, explore mode. However, now it's a little bit more buried in the menus. Right now, the normal image shows a one-time zoom and you have the chance to press the 7x button, which will zoom in seven times, of course, and that will use the telephoto camera. However, if you want to zoom in more, you can. Of course, you can zoom in more with the explore mode, but if you want to have the best camera quality possible, you can only use the seven times zoom in regular video mode. You can now shoot 4K in 25, 30 and 50 frames per second and 1080p in 25, 30 and 50 frames per second. You can also access those same manual camera settings that we previously talked about in photo mode, but now in video. Keep in mind the aperture is fixed at f4.4, so you don't have the chance to change that. However, you can still change the ISO and the shutter speed. So now something like these filters right here is going to be even more crucial for your video needs. During my tests, I noticed that the image is very, very usable. It's very sharp and I will definitely use it from now on. You can do some amazing parallax shots with this seven times zoom and now being able to actually lock your ISO and your shutter speed makes it a whole different ball game and you will be able to do so much more. So I'm really excited about this change. However, keep in mind, there is still a little bit of vibration, a little bit of wobbling when you are flying straight forward or straight backward, there will be a little bit of bumpiness in your footage every now and then because you're so zoomed in uh, that the image just cannot be super, super smooth. However, if you're doing some other types of movement, not just going straight forward or backward, if you're doing like a semicircle or any other uh, type of flying, you will see the image is a whole lot smoother. The next change we have is HLG being added to the list of color profiles for the Mavic 3. In video mode, you can now select HLG, which stands for Hybrid Lock Gamma. Hybrid Lock Gamma or HLG is a high dynamic range color profile, which enables you to shoot in scenarios where you have a lot of differences between the highlights and the shadows and the 
picture will be exposed properly similar to an HDR mode. And you will definitely see the difference between the standard color profile, D-Log and now HLG. They all have their own differences and they all have their purpose depending on the scenario where you're filming. I personally advise you to use HLG in scenarios where you have a lot of difference between the shadows and the highlights, maybe during sunset or other types of scenarios where you have a lot of differences in the light and you will have a little bit more detail in those darker areas because HLG will take care of bringing that detail back in those shadows while still maintaining detail in the highlights. Next we have a new frame rate for super slow motion on the Mavic 3 and that is 1080p 200 frames per second. Previously we had 4k at 120 frames per second now we have one more option for super super slow motion which is 1080p and 200 frames per second but DJI told me that this is still a work in progress. They're still optimizing the image quality right now. I'm really <laughs> dissatisfied with how the image looks like because it's just very mushy, very soft. It lacks detail and it's also very cropped in. So when you compare the image that you get from a 4K 120 frames per second to a 1080p 200 frames per second, you will see the difference. It crops in so much and it loses a whole bunch of details. So for now, I wouldn't really advise you to use this feature. It is something that is being worked on currently and it might improve in the future. It's good to have more options for some situations where you really, really, really need to slow everything down. Personally, I never use anything more than 120 frames per second, but I guess it's good to have. The next change is something that I personally haven't tested on my Mavic 3 because it's only for the Cine version and that is that we have Apple ProRes 422 and ProRes 422 LT codec being added to the Mavic 3 Cine. Speaking of the Mavic 3 Cine, there is one more thing being added specifically to that version of the drone and that is that there is now a one second interval option on hyperlapse on the Mavic 3 Cine. The next thing we have is that the D-Log color assistance is now optimized for more vivid color performance. So now when you shoot in D-Log and you enable the color display assist feature, the colors on your screen should be a bit more vibrant and more pleasant to look at while still recording all of your shots in flat color profile on the SD card. We have up to three times digital zoom for normal video mode. So now when you enter video mode, you will see a little scroll wheel on the right hand side of the screen, allowing you to quickly change from 24 to 72 millimeters of zoom. Keep in mind, this is digital zoom, so you can do the same thing later in post. But if you prefer to use that scroll wheel on the right hand side of the screen to manually zoom in as much as you want while you're doing something while you're flying, you can do that. Next, we have D-Log and HLG color profiles available for quick shots and master shots. And previously, I just forgot about quick shots and master shots because they were not letting me use them in anything other than standard color profile. And D-Log gives you so much flexibility, D-Log gives you so much control over your footage that I found out that these quick shots, for example, are just not something that I want to use if I have to shoot them in standard color profile. But now all quick shots besides Asteroid can be recorded in HLG or D-Log, so you have all the freedom to experiment with those. The next change we have is that the wide angle lens, which is still not available in Europe, now supports intelligent functions, including hyperlapse, master shots, focus track, and quick shots, excluding Asteroid. Previously, I've heard people complaining that they couldn't use these functions while using the wide angle lens. Well, now they can. And lastly, from this firmware update, DJI let us know that they fixed some minor bugs. They weren't more precise than that, so we don't really know what these minor bugs were, but it's good to know they were fixed. And it's good to know DJI is working to improve the general flying experience with the Mavic 3. I'm very happy with this firmware update, being able to test it a couple of times and being able to see the development of the telephoto camera mostly. And now with the HLG, the ability to shoot quick shots in D-Log and HLG and all of these other things really make me like this drone more. So I'm very happy to see that, very happy to cover this information for you guys from this new firmware update for the Mavic 3. That's pretty much everything I have to say for today's video. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by clicking on the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.